to see everybody this evening. Lord, you give us another wonderful day today. Amen. Praise the Lord. You watched over us and took care of us and kept us. You know what? Every one of us are here today are blessed. We're blessed because we're able to get up. We're blessed because we're able to be here. God just watches over us and takes good care of us, and I praise Him for it. We'll go to the Lord in prayer, have a word of prayer, and then we'll have Psalm 2 to get started. Let's pray. Father, we love you. We thank you, Lord, for this wonderful day that you've given. We thank you for another opportunity to come together this evening to worship you and praise you. Thank you, Lord, for each one to come this way this evening. I pray, God, you bless each one, each home and each family that's represented here tonight. Bless them in a special way. Lord, we pray for those out away from us, those who might be sick and afflicted this evening, and ask your blessings on them. Pray, God, you just touch their bodies and heal them and hold them up close to you. We pray for Brother Roy this evening, still down with his back. I ask, Lord, you uh, touch him and give him healing and help him to be back up and about. Yeah. Many others around us, Lord, with other problems. We pray, Lord, you just bless them. Lord, we pray most of all for those that are lost and undone, out away from you this evening. Ask, Lord, once again, you convict their hearts and draw them to you. Show them the need of a Savior before it's too late. Father, we pray you'll bless during this hour of service this evening. We pray you'll bless those that play the music and those that sing, and each one that takes a part in the service. We pray, Lord, everything that's said and done be according to your will. Bring honor and glory to your name. Bless as we look into your word tonight. God, I pray you just help us to rightly divide your word and get that from us we're in need of it. Help us, Lord, each one to take your word and apply it to our lives and use it that we might be better Christians. Be with us now as we go through this night. Watch over us, care for us, forgive us when we fail. In Jesus' precious name we ask. Amen. Amen. Wow. Uh -huh. 
that to know that we can know that our name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. We don't have to guess about it. We don't have to wonder about it. We can know for sure. If you don't know for sure, then you may not be headed in the right direction. You need to know that you know that you belong to the Lord Jesus Christ. Your name's written in the Lamb's Book of Life. Only thing we got going on, don't forget now, this Saturday we're going to have our, our play day and fish dinner and birthday party and all that stuff rolled into one, so we'll have a good time doing that. We'll get started. We'll get men's breakfast over at Long Island Saturday morning. Uh, Brother David and them always invite everybody to come and be over there, so look forward to that. Invite people to go and be over there. I'll always have a good time doing that. And then as soon as the men's breakfast is over, at, over, over there, we'll come back and get started over here. So they're supposed to bring the water slide. Uh, it's supposed to be here that morning early, so uh, I guess anytime anybody wants to come and get started, well, I mean, we'll get started. So uh, just come on whenever you get ready, and we'll have things to do and, and all kinds of stuff going on. So look forward to that. I know that's going to be a good day. And I think it's Skyler's birthday along with it. So we'll have, we'll have a birthday party right along with it. So look forward to that. And I guess that's about the only thing we got going on next next uh, fellowship dinner we'll have June the second week of June we'll have a fellowship dinner and, and uh, we'll have hamburgers and hot dogs or something so look forward to that that's that's all that's the only thing I can think of unless I forgot something Stan we'll take a look at that.
testimony, anything at all? Don't let the devil beat you out of the blessing now. Somebody surely got something to do to say about the Lord. That's what that song said. Let me tell you about my Jesus. That's what David was doing in Psalm 66. He, he wanted to tell people about God. He wanted to tell them about God's power and about God's provision. He wanted to tell them what God had done in his life. He wanted to tell them what God was doing right then. You know what? We ought to be that way. We ought to be ready to tell people what God's doing in our life. I don't know about y'all, but I'm blessed. God takes care of me every day. You know what? He watches over me. He keeps me. He meets all my needs. There's not anything that I need. I, I might see things sometimes that I think I'd like to have, but you know what? I don't need anything because God already takes care of all my Amen. needs. Right. He's met every need that I've ever had. And God, the God of glory, He'll do that for you. If you think you need something, you know what? All you have to do is go to Him and ask Him and believe, and He'll take care of it. Right. Anything that comes up. David is thought, in Psalm 66 here, starting in verse I was thinking about this this week. Starting in this verse, well, we've done down through about verse 6 or 7 last week, but uh, back up in verse 5. I'm going to read starting in verse 5. And you listen to what David's saying about his God. You listen to how much he wants to praise yeah, God. Yeah. You listen to how much he wants to go to the people and tell the people what God has done for him. Right. You know what? We ought to be that way. We ought to be ready to go out into the world and tell the people what God's done for yeah. us. I don't know about you, but like I said, I'm blessed. Amen. I don't believe there's anybody in here that's not blessed. Right. Everybody in here's got a place to sleep tonight. Yes. Everybody in here had something to eat today. Yep. Everybody in here's got a roof over their head. Yes. You know what? God has taken care of us. He's blessed us. Yep. Each and every one of us. We've got whatever we need. Amen. We have all those needs met. He said, listen what David said. Come and see the works of God. He is terrible in his doings toward the children of men. And that terrible don't mean bad. That means awesome. Yeah. He is awesome in his works toward right. the children of men. You know what? Toward his children. I believe we are God's children. Whenever your children were growing up, you wanted them to be happy. When your children were growing up, you wanted to have wanted them to have everything they needed. You wanted them to be well taken care of. You wanted them to be fed and clothed and nourished and, and raised up the way they ought to be raised up. You know, that's what God wants out of us. He wants us to be well fed. He wants us to be nourished. He wants us to be raised up the way that we ought to be raised up. I believe God wants us to be happy. Yeah. I don't believe God wants us to go around with a long face. I don't believe He wants us to be sad. He wants us to be happy. And you know what? He provides everything that we need to be happy. And when we're not happy, it's not because God hadn't done what He said. Right. It's not because God hadn't done what He promised He'd do. It's because we don't do what we say. That's right. That's right. It's because we're not where we need to be. Because it doesn't make any difference what's going on around you. It doesn't make any difference how, how bad a trial you're going through. If you're where you need to be with God, you'll be happy. Right. You'll be satisfied with what God does. Listen, David said, said uh, uh, come and see the works of God. He's a terrible, he is terrible in his doings toward the children of men. He turned the sea into dry land. Now David begins to talk about God's power. You, know, you guys sing about God's power. You say he's able to save the worst sinner. No sinner too hard, too bad for him to save. He can save any of it. He can do anything else. He, he is an awesome God, filled with power. Listen, he goes on to say, he turned the sea into dry land. They went through the flood on foot. There did we rejoice in him. He ruleth by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Let not the re rebellious exalt themselves. Over in Proverbs, listen, in Proverbs 15, 3 says, The eyes of the Lord are in every place. You know what? God sees what people are doing. That's right. I know there's a lot of people out there in the world today who lie and cheat and steal and put themselves up on a pedestal and make themselves better than they anybody else around them in their own eyes. They're better than anybody else around them. That's what David's talking about. That's what the, uh, uh, Solomon's talking about here in this proverb. He's saying, you know, don't be put, the, the righteous, I mean the unrighteous don't need to put themselves up. Said the Lord's eyes are 
in every place beholding the evil and the good. They may put themselves up here and they may feel like they're better than everybody else, but you know what? One day, one day, judgment's coming. That's right. They'll all be judged according to their works. We'll all be judged according to our works. And they'll all be judged also likewise. The difference is, the evil will be judged at the great white throne judgment where they'll be cast into the lake of fire. Right. You, and I, you and I will be judged at the beam of seat of judgment. Right. You know, it's not where we're going to be judged for sin. It's going to be where we're going to be judged for works. And I know that's scary to people talk about works. Like, nobody don't want to hear that works thing. Right. Everybody thinks you, get, uh, you, you got messed up when you go talking about works. I'm not talking about works, working to be saved. No. I'm talking about working because we are saved. Right. I want to tell you this week, this evening, if you're not working for God, then you're not appreciating your salvation. Right. And if you're not working for God, you're not appreciating what right. God's done for you. Right. If you're not working for God, you're not doing what God called us to do. Right. He called us each one to work for Him. The eyes of the Lord never are in every place beholding the evil, yeah. the good and the evil. And this is also a Jeremiah. Well, never mind. I'll go back to that in a minute. He said, he ruleth by his power forever. His eyes behold the nations. Now there it is again, just like what Proverbs said. He sees them all. Yeah. He sees here and there and everywhere else. Oh, bless our God, you people, and make the voice of his praise to be heard. Psalm 103 Verse 1 starts off, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me, bless his holy name. You know what? We need to be that way. Amen. We need to be that way. We, yeah. With all that's in me, bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that's within me, bless his holy Amen. name. That's what we're supposed to do. You know what? He's worthy of all of our Amen. praise. Amen. Right. He's done enough to deserve all of my praise. Yeah. I ought not to be sitting back and just forget about what he's done for me. He's blessed me. He's watched over me. He's kept me. He's took care of me. He's met all of my needs. I ought not to be just sitting back on my backside and letting the world go by. Right. Yeah. He said, which holdeth our soul in life and suffereth not our feet to be moved. Do you know what that's saying? He holds our soul in among the living. We're here because God's taking care of us. Right. We're here because He keeps us. Yeah. And he, oh, listen, He's here. We're here because God takes such good care of us. For Thou, O God, has proved us. Thou hast tried us as silver is tried. Thou brought us into the net and laid affliction upon our loins. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, but Thou brought us out into a wealthy place. Yeah. Yes. You know what? The troubles. And the trials, the hardships that come on us, you know what they're for? They're to make us stronger right, and to right. make us better right. and to increase our faith. Amen. When we come out on the other side, we're better than we was when we went in. Right. Our faith is increased and our Amen. faith has grown. Yeah. And we know that God saw us through it, <laughs> so we know he'll see us through the next one. That's right. We can have faith and believe yeah. that God's going to take care of us. This, he goes on, he says... Which, which my lips have uttered and my mouth has spoken when I was in trouble. I will offer unto thee burnt sacrifices of fatted fatlings with the incense of rams. I will offer bullocks with goats. Come and hear all ye that fear God. And I will declare what he hath done for my soul. What's he done for your soul? What's God done for your soul? He saved it. He saved it. It was headed to a devil's hell. But he saved it. That's right. He went to that old cross Amen. and paid that sin debt and saved my soul. Right. I'm glad they all listen. Come and hear all ye that fear God, and I will declare what he hath done for my soul. I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. In other words, I bragged on him. Amen. I said, What a God I serve. Yeah. Oh, he's a God of power, Steve. Right. He's a God of provision. Yeah. He's right. a God, listen, he's a God of protection. Yeah. He's a God of uh, uh, the, of everything that we need, right. whatever it is you need, God's a God that will take care of it. If I listen to this, I cried unto him with my mouth, and he was extolled with my tongue. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. Amen. That's right. That's right. If I regard iniquity in my heart, yeah. the Lord will not hear me. All those people, I ought not to say that. Go ahead, brother. I might 
might as well, I'm thinking. And all those people that come to church on every uh, four times, those, those four time a year Christians, yeah. they come on Easter Sunday and, and Christmas and Mother's Day and Father's Day, four times a year, then four times a year Christians. You know what? Praise God for one day. I might as well just go on and say that they're headed for the devil's hell. That's right. You know why? Because they regard iniquity. Yeah. They care more about the world than they right. do about the Lord. Right. They care more about the world than they do about serving God or yeah. living for Him. Yeah. They care more about the world than they do their own soul. That's right. And they show up four times a year and they profess to be Christians. Yeah. They're four, time, four day a year Christians. Mm. Well, I'm afraid, praise God, that they missed the boat. Amen. I'm afraid they're not going to make it. If I regard iniquity in my heart, the Lord will not hear me. But verily, but verily, God hath heard me. He hath attended to, my, to the voice of my prayer. Blessed be God, which hath not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. As I was reading these and thinking, I thought that when I read that there, he said, he hath, he hath attained, attended to the voice of my prayer. I thought about Job. You know what the Bible says about Job in the first few verses there? Say, say he has skewed evil. That's right. In other words, he didn't, he disdained evil. He didn't want anything to do with it. Right. You know what? Whenever you disdain evil, and when you don't want anything to do with evil or anything wicked, God hears your prayer. That's right. He says, if you regard iniquity in your heart, he'll not hear your prayer. Right. But he but he goes right on in the next verse. And he said, because, because I eschewed evil, is what it really, that's not the word it uses, but because I eschewed evil, because I stayed away from evil, because I didn't want to have anything to do with that, that's why God heard my prayers. Yes, right. God hears our prayers. Because we stay away from evil, because we don't be involved in, blessed be God, which has not turned away my prayer, nor his mercy from me. But God, who is rich in mercy, Amen. for his great love, or with he loved us. I'm glad to know we serve a God that's full of mercy. I thought about down through these verses here. You'd see God's power. You'd see God's power to lay down his life. You'd see God's power to deliver. You can see God's power not only to save, but to keep. Right. Aren't you glad God has not only the power to save my soul, right. but he has the power to keep it. Amen. You know how he does that? He sends us his spirit to indwell us, to live in us, to point us in the way that we ought to go, to teach us the things that we ought to do. And, and listen, as I, I read those verses there, I was thinking, he has the power to lay his life down. You know, he told them, I have the power to lay my life down and to take it up again. Amen. God had the power to take, it, take his life back up. He allowed them to crucify him on the cross. Yes. They didn't overpower him and take him to a cross. That's right. They didn't overpower him and take his life. He laid his life down That's for right. you and I. Amen. He made himself vulnerable to the Roman soldiers in order that they might take him down that road to Galgotha and put him on the old cross. Listen, it wasn't because he didn't have the power to stop it. He didn't have to call 10,000 angels. All he had to do was say, no, that's it. That's the end of it. Right. And that would have been the end of it, and you and I wouldn't be here. <coughs> he has the power to lay his life down. He had the power to take it back up. He, had to, he has the power to give life. Yeah. In John 10, 10, he says, the devil comes to steal, kill, and destroy. But I come that they may have life and have it more abundantly. Right. And have it more abundant. God wants us to have abundant lives. Right. Listen, He has the power to take up life again. Ooh. Lazarus was dead. And listen, over in, in John chapter uh, 11, verse 43, John chapter 11, verse 43, Jesus, when Jesus went to the tomb where Lazarus was laid, you know what? He didn't have to. Uh, there's no hocus pocus or none of that stuff. All he did was say, Lazarus, come forth. That's right. You know what? He took up life right there. He took up life right there. That's right. And listen, he has the power to take up life. When they put him in that tomb, when they put Jesus in that tomb, 
You know what they thought they buried him there and he'd be there till his bones rotted. Yeah. I'm sure that they thought that he'd never be out of there. But praise God, he had the power That's right. to take up his life. Amen. He did. That old stone was rolled away and he's alive and well. Amen. Praise well, yes. God, I'm glad he's alive he and well. Is. He had the in Peter chapter 2, he, he had the power to deliver us. <clears throat> you know what? We're already delivered. That's right. The day you got saved, you was the same as in heaven. That's right. That's right. You've been delivered from the devil and from the clutches of the devil. Thank You've me, been Father. delivered from the flesh and the, and the temptations of the flesh. Right. You've been delivered from those things. Listen to what he said over here. Over here in Peter. Uh, in Peter chapter, in 2 Peter chapter 2 verse 9 said, The Lord knoweth how to deliver the God out of temptation and to reserve the unjust unto the day of judgment to be punished. Yeah, that's right. God knows how to deliver us yeah. out of temptation. That's right. The way he does that is he gives us the spirit of God to point us in the way that we ought to go. He delivers us out of temptation to the way he reserves the wicked for the day of punishment. They're reserved. That, that reservation is made and it'll be kept. One day, this, this day of grace as we know it, one day it's going to end. Yeah, right. We live in the age of grace. Yes. But one day it's going to run out. One day it's right. going to end. Right. We, we talk about that sometimes down at the garage. And one day, that day of grace is going to going to run out for those who are the wicked, those who are, right. who are the evil. But those who belong to God, <coughs> Those who belong to the Lord Jesus Christ indwelt by the Holy Spirit. Amen. They've been delivered. Right. I'm delivered. Right. I'm delivered from sin, Brother Marty. I don't have to partake of it. That's right. I'm delivered from it. I'm delivered from this old flesh. This old flesh is tempted sometimes. Yeah. Tempted to do things that ought not to do. Right. Say things that ought not to say. Right. But I'm delivered. Amen. I don't do those things. And I don't say those things. Right. Because I'm delivered. The Spirit of God has dwelt me and delivered me out of that place where I was at. I thought about Brother Marty's song, The Old Man's Dead. Yeah. And what I'm glad, praise God, the old man's dead, Steve. Hey, man. Not there anymore. Right. Hmm. Man, I'm glad. I'm glad that the old man's gone. This is in Galatians chapter 1, verse 4 said, Who gave himself for our sins, that, listen to this, that he might deliver us from this present evil. According to the will of God our Father. That's right. He gave himself for us in order to deliver us out of sin. We were bound in sin. We belonged to the devil without Jesus Christ. But I'm glad when Jesus Christ came in and he brought us, gave us that spirit of God to indwell us, that we were delivered from that sin, from that curse that we were in under. Listen, he has, I said he, he has uh, in uh, uh, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 18, 2 Timothy chapter 4 verse 18 says, and the Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. The Lord shall deliver me from every evil work. That's just what I just got to say. I've been delivered. I used to want to do those things. I used to be bound to that sin. Needed, thought I needed to do that. Yeah. Felt like I was doing good. But I was headed for a level as hell yeah. until I was delivered right. from that place, from that sin. Yeah. Listen, he goes on. He goes on down through there. I thought, you know, he don't only have the power to save us, but he has the power to keep us. Mm -hmm. I like Brother Marty's favorite, some of Brother Marty's favorite verses over there in Rome. i got to turn over and read them, Brother Marty. Uh, Brother Marty's favorite verses. Over in Romans chapter 8, starting about verse uh, about verse 30, 35, yeah, about verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? <coughs> Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness or peril, or sword, as it is written, for thy sake. We're conquered. Kill. We're killed all the day long. We're counted as sheep for the 
the slaughter. Nay, nay, but in all these things, we're more than conquerors through him that loved us. That's right. For I'm glad to know him. That's right. Nor height. Nor any other creature. Second Thessalonians chapter 3 verse 3 says the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from it. I'm telling you when you trust in the Lord if you believe in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ put your faith and your trust in him he'll deliver you Amen. from evil. That's what he said. Yeah. He's, I'm going to read it again. He said the Lord is faithful who shall establish you and keep you from evil. Yeah. Now I'm old. I know a lot of times when our faith is fresh, when you, you just got saved, yeah. that you, boy, you can conquer the world right. until the devil gets a hold right. of you and causes you to do something. Yeah, it, don't don't do. <laughs> it don't, that's right. The first day or two that you the first day or two that you begin to witness for the Lord, he's gonna, the devil's gonna jump in there and cause you to do something that you didn't want to do. Right. And cause you to be heartbroken over it. But but God says that he'll keep you from that. When, you're, when your faith is fresh and you're strong and you and you can avoid that, but the, then when the devil comes and he throws that down there in front of you, you won't go back to that. You won't go back to that place because he'll keep you from it. He'll keep you from it with the spirit of God living in you that'll point you in the way that you ought to go and teach you that we, we have that comforter, that Holy Spirit. John chapter 14, verse 26, and I believe this says the comforter, which is the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my name. He'll teach you all things and bring you your remembrance whatsoever things I've said unto you. Yeah, That's how he keeps us. He keeps us from evil because he gives us the Spirit to lead us and guide us in the way that we ought to go. He, he goes on there. He has the power not only to, to save us, but to keep us. John chapter 10, verse 28. Listen to what this says. I give them eternal life. Steve, you could have said it the other night, Sunday night. I give them eternal life. They shall never perish. And no man shall pluck them out of my hand. Right. He not only has the power to save me, but he has the power to keep me. Right. And no man shall pluck me out right. of his hand. My name is written in the Lamb's Book of Life, and it won't ever be taken out. It won't ever be taken out. Now there is a, a, a verse back over there in Revelation, a little bit debatable. It said he might take your part out of the Lamb's Book of Life. Now, I guess you could say that means he might take your name out, but I, it don't say he takes your name out. It says he takes your part out. If you uh, add to or take away from the scripture he might take your part out it don't say your name but it don't say it ain't your name either. well when you get saved what's your part your work yeah and first Corinthians chapter 3 I think is man shall deny oh yeah yeah fornication. take his part yeah out of the lamb's book of life well anyway I'm not going to get into that Anyway, anyway, let's move on. We'll go on. I'll get stuck in the mud here. <laughs> Power to test us. This is verse 12. Verse 12, there, listen to what he says in verse 12. Thou hast caused men to ride over our heads. We went through fire and through water, and thou brought us out into a wealthy place. You know, God has the power to test us. Amen. And he'll try us sometimes. But you know what? He's not trying us to see what we're going to do. He already knows. That's right. He's not testing us to see how we're going to act. He already knows. You know what he's doing? He's testing us so that we know how we're going to act. That's right. He's testing us so that we find out where we stand with him. I don't know about you, but I'm going to stand as close to him as I can get. Amen. I want to stand as close to him as I can get. Yeah. And he tests me sometimes to see if I'm going to stand there or not. To see if I'm where I need to be with him. He already knows, but it's for me to see. 
It's for me to find out where I stand with him. He has the power to test us in order that we find out if we're where we need to be with him. And that's the reason for testing. He don't, uh, trials and trouble don't come. God's not a big ogre standing up there in heaven with a big stick waiting to hit us over the head when we mess up. wants us to see where we stand with him. So sometimes he allows, he don't sin, but he allows things to come in our life. He allowed Job, listen, look at Job. He allowed Job to be, nearly be just wiped out. Everything gone. In a terrible situation. But it wasn't because he didn't like Job. He said, hey, my servant Job, he loved Job just like he does you and I. But he allowed the devil to tempt him. He allowed the devil to cause him all that hurt and all that destruction. But listen, look what happened to him on the other end. When he come out on the other end, he had ten times more than he did when he went in. Blessed beyond measure. Blessed beyond measure. He has the power to test us. And then I thought about God's performances. You know, sometimes things are measured according to their performances. If you go buy a car, it's measured kind of by the its performance. Uh, it, it, it gets good gas mileage and it runs fast and it's got a lot of power or it's uh, whatever, pretty or whatever. You know, you, you judge it by its performance. Well, I'm going to tell you, God's a great performer. God's a great performer. He performs great things. In our lives, he performed. Listen, whenever the uh, Israelites were down, I got gosh, I'm behind. When the Israelites was down in Egypt, you know what? They were down in Egypt, and they went to Pharaoh. Moses went to Pharaoh. Pharaoh, and he said, "Let my people go." Pharaoh said, "No, I ain't gonna do it." And God said, "That's okay. I'll perform a little something for you, Pharaoh." And he sent him some locusts. He sent him some frogs. And he sent him all them other. <clears throat> what, how many plagues was it? I forgot, how many, I forgot how many it was now. How many? Ten. Ten. Okay. Sent him all them other. Eight plagues besides the frogs and, the, and the, all those things. But you know what? God performs today. That's right. He's a great performer. He's still performing in the world today. If you look around, I'm going to go out on the limb to say this, but you look around at people that, that live wickedly and, and people that live badly and, and a few of them prosper pretty good, but most of them in the end, they end up with cancer, heart disease, dead in a car accident. You can just watch. God's still performing today. He's still working today. He's still got his hand on this nation today. You know what? God hadn't turned us away. He's still got us. I, that's the reason I believe over second. That's the reason Peter said over second Peter two and or uh, is, is it first Peter two and nine anyway? In Peter two and nine, he said, "You're a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you might show forth the praises." Listen, you know what? God holds us up in high esteem. Into his marvelous life. That's right. Amen. In, into his marvelous life. That's right. He's still performing those works today. And I thought, you know, no greater work than over in Titus chapter 2, verse 11. In Titus chapter 2, verse 11, he talks about the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men. That's a performance. When God sends his grace, the grace of God that bringeth salvation hath appeared to all men, teaching us that denying ungodliness and worldly lust, we're to live soberly, righteously, and godly in this present world, looking for the glorious appearing of the great God and our Savior, who gave himself for us, cleansed us from all iniquity, gave himself for us to cleanse us from all. God's still performing today. 
every time I see somebody, Brother Martin, every time I see somebody get saved, or every time I see somebody make a decision for God, that's a performance of God. That's right. He's working a work right there. And we see him perform. Not only that, he performs miracles in our life every day. Every day he performs a miracle in our life. Our old hearts are such intricate things. Our circulatory system, Janie knows more about that than I do, but your, your circulatory system, your lungs, all that stuff. God's performing miracles every single day. Is it not a miracle? Absolutely. What makes my heart beat? I don't know. It's a miracle. Oh, it's kept me around here for 77 years. It's a miracle. God's good. He blesses us and he takes care of us. I'm just half done. I'm going to quit. I got to quit. It's good stuff, y'all. God's perform God is a performer. He performs miracles in our life every day. Every day. You're here today. If you don't realize that God's working in your life, you're missing the most. That's right. Because there's joy to be had yes. in the salvation of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. In his name. Anything stand would be dismissed. Come on, we're not gonna have an altar. If you're here and you need to do business with God, you know the altar's always open.